Good evening and salam Lisa Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight with me. I'm Jessica Lee. Our top stories, contraflow lanes to tackle traffic congestion walls. New socio-economic policy shift to take effect next year. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim today announced additional allocations to repair the boys' dormitory of Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Agama or SMKA Datuk Haji Abu Hassan Sayil, which caught fire in July last year. Now, the Prime Minister said the earlier allocation approved was close to 3 million ringgit and with the additional, the total amount approved was 3.89 million ringgit. The Premier also said that the state government, along with the Public Works Department, or JKR, have been urged to expedite the restoration process. The Prime Minister also announced an additional allocation of 310,000 ringgit to repair other facilities such as the staff room. The inflation rate will not spike further if targeted subsidies, especially for fuel, is implemented. Deputy Finance Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Mazlan said the reality is the government can save up a lot through targeted subsidies for which the savings can be redistributed for the general development of the economy. As such, he strictly emphasised that it is not wise to assume inflation will rise simply because targeted subsidies will no longer be enjoyed by the rich. Targeted subsidies will only be for the benefit of B40 and the M40 groups. Apabila orang yang kaya uh, tak dapat subsidi minyak, macam mana harga barang boleh naik? Jadi saya pun tak berapa nampak dia punya kaitan. Okay? Uh, saya harap dikira semula lah. Uh, 3.8 jadi 10 tu saya rasa dia nampak macam pelik uh, hanya kerana kita menarik uh, subsidi pada orang kaya. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Ahmad said that the ministry is still in the process of completing and finalising the targeted subsidy system. Once it is completed, the implementation date will be discussed and negotiated before it can be brought to cabinet to be gazetted. Three contraflow or tidal flow lanes will be activated in Kuala Lumpur from the 3rd of July as an immediate measure to tackle traffic congestion woes. The Transport Minister Anthony Loksiu Folk said the matter was decided in a technical committee on traffic congestion meeting, which he chaired today. Now, the meeting has agreed to implement contraflow from Sungai Besi Toll Plaza to the Best Raya Interchange involving 2.4 kilometres of road, which will be open to all private vehicles, excluding motorcycles. Now, the meeting also decided that the contraflow would be extended from Jalan Maharaja Lela to Taman Konot and Jalan Ampang from Ampang Point to Jalan Tun Raza. Now, the contraflow lanes will be in effect starting 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. for the morning session and 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. for the evening session. According to data from the Kuala Lumpur City Hall DBKL, approximately 6 million vehicles are on the road in Kuala Lumpur every day. At present, the public transport ridership is only at 15%. percent one by yes as i mentioned to you earlier only in kl one day six million vehicles but in terms of our ridership for for train is uh 900 over thousand Meanwhile, in a related development, Anthony Lok said that DBKL has been advised to be more strict in giving approvals to developers to close roads for construction. The matter is highly crucial for avoiding road congestion, especially in urban areas. 
Tapi saya telah pun uh, menyatakan dalam jawatan kuasa tadi dan meminta BPKL supaya lebih tegas dari segi uh, permohonan untuk melanjutkan tempoh penutupan jalan. Maksudnya kalau seseorang, sesebuah syarikat pemaju ataupun uh, pelaksana projek pembangunan apabila mereka memohon untuk tutup lorong ataupun lorong uh, jalan di mana-mana satu kawasan, dia ada satu tempoh yang diberikan. Biasanya tempoh itu tak panjang. Tiga bulan, paling banyak pun enam bulan. Tapi realitinya, selalunya berlaku ialah, walaupun tempoh diberikan itu pendek, tetapi uh, uh, dia ditutup lebih panjang. Dia akan minta uh, lanjutan dan sebagainya. At the moment, there are seven projects involving road closures currently in Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia has expressed intent on increasing collaborations with Russia in aquaculture and agrobiotechnology research and development. Agriculture and Food Security Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Sabu said currently Malaysia still has a high rate of dependency on food imports. Perjumpaan seterusnya ya, kita tahu misalnya MOU akan ada tanda tangan beberapa bulan lagi MOU antara Malaysia dengan Rusia dan saya juga telah mengundang Menteri Pertanian Rusia untuk datang ke Lompok menandatangani MOU iaitu perjanjian uh, under persapahaman antara Malaysia dan Rusia khasnya dalam bidang pertanian. He said this in a Malaysia-Russia roundtable session in the Kazan Forum 2023. Also participating in the session were Higher Education Minister Datuk Sri Khalid Nordin and Dmitry Volvak, Russian Economic Development Deputy Minister. Last year, the amount of agricultural imports from Russia increased 13.7% to 1.08 billion ringgit compared to 95 million ringgit in the previous year. Exports to Russia also increased in the same time frame by 23 3.2% to 53 million ringgit. The government will be implementing a shift in the social economic policy based on the spendable income of households in the country. Now, according to Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli, it will change the current approach, which is based on the income of B40, M40, and the T20 groups. Um, ada banyak perbincangan mengenai pendekatan ini kerana dia tidak menggambarkan sepenuhnya dari segi perbandingan kemampuan dari satu isi rumah ke satu isi rumah kerana ada banyak variabel lain selain daripada pendapatan semata-mata. Variabel itu termasuklah berapa tanggungan anak, lokasi dan sebagainya. The social economic policy shift will be done in phases and is expected to begin in January 2024. The change will be done according to data from the central database OPADU. Meanwhile, Rafizi said the government will announce measures to facilitate and expand the usage of solar technology in domestic residences. The minister said this is to encourage more households to adapt solar energy to power home appliances in line with the government's decision to implement targeted power subsidies specifically for the B40 and the M40 groups. Untuk mensasarkan subsidi elektrik agar subsidi elektrik dikekalkan kepada kumpulan B40 dan B5 dan M40 sementara kumpulan pengguna kediaman dari kumpulan T20 yang menggunakan elektrik pada kadar yang tinggi akan mula membayar pada tarif yang lebih hampir dengan harga pasaran. He added that further details on the matter will be announced in the near future. Rafizi noted that this is expected to help balance out high-income household tariff increases estimated to be around 10% of the majority of households in Malaysia. Up next, KKD to focus on internet community needs of Sarawakians. The Communications and Digital Ministry is prepared to look into internet connectivity issues faced by the Rakyat in Sarawak. Now, its Minister Fami Fazil said the matter is one of the main focus of his official working visit to the Bumi Kenyalang. 
Uh, tapi utama ialah isu internet. Itu yang kita akan fokus. Uh, beberapa masalah prasarana, uh, isu uh, kita ada menara-menara tapi tidak ada kuali. Ya. Uh, jadi ini antara perkara yang uh, memang kita tahu sedar dan uh, hari ini adalah untuk uh, meneliti beberapa perkara untuk segera menyelesaikan. Elaborating further on the matter, the minister also said there are over 600 towers managed by the Sarawak Digital Economy Corporation. However, less than half of the towers have giant mobile network operators functioning. In addition, some of the towers are also located in areas without 4G coverage and therefore does not provide 4G coverage. Now, Fami said the ministry is currently looking into several fixes to be implemented immediately. Now, this includes calling for major service providers companies to get involved and provide better internet coverage. The Ani Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Ri Ayatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria today grace the 30th edition of the Associated Country Women of the World or ACWW Triennial World Conference 2023. Now also present were Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and his wife Datuk Sri Dr Wan Aziza Wan Ismail. In her address, Dunku Aziza, who is also Pahang Women's Institute or WI president, shared her journey with ACWW, which she started being actively involved in 2004. Now, in welcoming the participants to Malaysia, Her Majesty said she hoped that they would enjoy the conference and the sideline activities. As hostess society, we have tried to incorporate and showcase the diversity of our culture, Choosing handicrafts, place of interest for the day trips and spouse programs to enable all of you to experience nature in the eight days and seven nights you are with us. We hope that you will enjoy your stay and will be happy to attest our conference team that diversity is our strength. ACWW was founded in 1929 to bring together rural women and their organizations across the globe. It seeks to address the challenges they face because of their community's isolation, discrimination against women and their lack of standing in political processes. ACWW's membership spans 82 countries and since 1947, the association had passed over 180 policy resolutions by popular vote. Now, a man was ordered to undergo psychiatric treatment at Hospital Bahagia Ulukinta in Perak after he pleaded guilty to two counts of offensive postings regarding the Anipetuan Agong and Raja Permaisuri Agong. Now, the accused, Sharil Momasarif, age 40, was instructed to undergo the treatment after he claimed to be suffering from mental illness. Sharia Mama Sarif made the confession after the charges were read out in front of Judge and Priscilla Hema Malini at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court. The accused used a Twitter profile under the name of Sharil Sarif39 and knowingly made offensive communications involving the King and the Queen with the intention of offending others last 12th of March. The charges were made according to Section 233, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Communications and Multimedia Act. 1998 Act 588, which can be punished under Section 233, Subsection 3 of the same Act. The sentence carries a fine not exceeding 50,000 ringgit or up to one year imprisonment or both upon conviction. China unveils grand development plan for Central Asia. That and more coming up in our foreign segment. The Thailand's progressive move forward party today said potential coalition partners need not support its controversial stance on amending the royal insult law as it seeks to win the backing of other parties to form a government. 
Move Forward, led by Peter Limjer Runrad, won the most seats in the lower house in this week's election, riding on a wave of youth support for policies like undoing business monopolies and amending the strict Lesse Majeste law known as Article 112 of the Criminal Code. A coalition agreement is expected to be announced on Monday. The Lesse Majeste law prescribes up to 15 years of jail for perceived offences against the monarchy, which many ties can considered sacrosanct, but opponents say it is used to stifle dissent as some 200 people have been charged in recent years under the law. Now, Move Forward wants to amend the law to reduce prison terms and narrow down complainants to just the Royal Household Bureau. Now, Move Forward's eight-party coalition talks have mustered 313 votes in 750-seat bicameral legislature, but under the military drafted constitution, it will need support from either the unelected conservative-leaning Senate or other parties to form a government. Now, third-place winner, Boom Jai Thai Party, which commands a critical voting bloc, said it would not support any premier that would amend the less just a law. Now, analysts, meanwhile, say not forcing other parties to adopt its position on Les Majeste could help move forward, draw in additional votes. A provincial government official said Pakistani police plan to search the Lahore home of former Prime Minister Imran Khan today in an operation that could trigger more violence as the country grapples with political and economic instability. Amir Mir, the Information Minister of Punjab Province, said hundreds of policemen led by the City Police Commissioner would conduct the search operation later today. Now, Khan's home is located in the Zaman Park neighbourhood of Lahore, the capital of Punjab. In March, the area was a site of pitched battles between his supporters and police who had tried to arrest the 70-year-old former cricket star for not showing up in court. Now, Khan was eventually arrested on the 9th of May on graft charges, which he denies, and was later set free on court-ordered bail that expires later this month. His arrest triggered a wave of violence that saw supporters attacking military installations and other government buildings. The clashes came as the South Asian nation of two 220 million faces its worst ever economic crisis, with critical IMF funding needed to avert a balance of payment crisis delayed for months. On Wednesday, the Punjab government asked Khan to hand over supporters who it blamed for the attacks on the powerful army and who it says are hiding in his home. Now, Khan has denied sheltering anyone involved in the violence and has said the authorities could search his home, but only with legal warrants from a court. Chinese President Xi Jinping today unveiled a grand plan for Central Asia's development, from building infrastructure to boosting trade, taking on a new leadership role in a region that has traditionally been a Russian sphere of influence. Commenting further on the matter, Xi said China is ready to coordinate development strategies with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan and promote the modernization of all. The Chinese Premier said this in an address to a China Central Asia summit in the Chinese historic city of Xi'an. He noted that to bolster their cooperation and Central Asian development, China will provide Central Asian countries with a total of 26 billion yuan or $3.8 billion of financing support and grants. Explaining that the world needs a prosperous Central Asia, he said that a dynamic and prospering Central Asia will help people in the region achieve their aspiration for a better life and that it will also lend strong impetus to global economy economic recovery. With its engagement, China has put itself at the forefront of the race for political influence and energy assets in the resource-rich region, with Russia distracted by its war in Ukraine and the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan, diminishing the U.S. presence in the region. Emergency services said today a wildfire in the western Spanish region of Extremadura 
has ravaged up to 3,700 acres and forced 550 people from their homes, with windy weather complicating efforts to bring it under control. A commander of the Military Emergency Unit, David Barona, told State TV Channel 24H that there are very strong gusts of wind generating a speed and progress that make efforts to extinguish it difficult. Now, the commander further noted that the smoke plume is spreading at a low altitude, which makes it difficult for air assets to access the area. Now, up to 250 firefighters are fighting the blaze in an area called Pino Franquedo in Cacasi. Serra's province near the border with Portugal. Authorities have ordered the evacuation of as many as 550 people in the villages of Cadalso, Descarga Maria and Robledilio de Gata. According to authorities, natural causes spark the fire. An unusually dry winter across parts of southern Europe, coming after three years of below-average rainfall in Spain, have raised the risk of wildfires. According to the European Forest Fire Information System, some 493 fires destroyed a record of 307,000 hectares in Spain last year. Coming up in sport, sports associations to submit post-mortems to KBS. Now, all national sports associations involved in the 2023 Southeast Asia or Sea Games in Cambodia have been asked to submit post-mortems in the wake of Malaysia's showing in the biennial games. The Youth and Sports Minister Hannah Yeo said the reports need to be sent along with their short-term and long-term plans that will determine the type of support they will receive from the National Sports Council or the NSC. Hannah said sports that produce medals will be given support in terms of athlete management, coaching, training centres and exposure, along with local and foreign competitions and support services from the National Sports Institute. She also urged the National Sports Associations to conduct institutional reforms so that sports in the country could progress and to focus on new talent development, as it was among the sports that offered a lot of gold medals, a total of 39 in Cambodia. Now, Hannah also praised the junior athletes and those who made their debut at the Games for their good performances, especially Uma Osman, who won the goal in the men's 400 metres with a new national record. Okay, 12 pingat emas, atlet kali pertama, dan 20 perak, 46 gangsa. Jumlah pingat, 78 dikutip oleh atlet yang buat penampilan kali pertama. Ada di kalangan ini 15 tahun saja. Dan ini aset masa hadapan kita, ini pelaburan yang kita uh, maksudkan. On another note, Hannah said her ministry will consider reinstating Sepak Takro as one of the core sports based on the sports achievement at the recently concluded Sea Games in Cambodia. She, however, noted that the ministry would need a little more time to carry out an evaluation process of the facilities provided by the government as well as hold more town hall sessions with the sports fraternity to exchange views and obtain all necessary information. Now, Hannah said Sepak Takro can and win the country medals and is very popular and must be supported. The minister said this after the launch of the Sepak Takro League or the STL at the World Trade Centre Kuala Lumpur today. The STL will be held from the 26th of May to the 5th of August in Kuala Kangsa, Pera. The national Sepak Takro team won four silver and four bronze medals at the biennial games in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Sepak Takro, weightlifting and taekwondo were dropped by the National Sports Council or NSC from the list of core sports in 2017 following declining performances and not showing any improvement based on a review, including an in-depth study of the performance of the three sports since 2007. On the local football scene, Negeri Sembilan FC or NSFC continue their winning streak in last night's Super League match due to making less mistakes as well as good planning. Now, head coach Kay Devon said that despite lining up all local players to face PDRM FC yesterday, 
the high discipline shown by his men also played a role in the team's success. Yesterday, PDRM's FC's desire to create a sensation at home at the Petaling Jaya City Council Stadium, or MBPJ, failed when they lost 1-2 to NSFC. Now, the win saw the Jiang squad climb three rungs to the sixth place with 16 points after 11 games. In the meantime, Devon said the good understanding displayed by defenders Nasrullah Hanif Johan, Tommy Mawad Bada and Zainal Abidin Jamil was also one of the factors the squad was able to perform well in the last two weeks. Now, last Sunday, NSFC got back to their winning streak when they beat Kuala Lumpur City FC or KL City FC 2-1 in a Super League match at Tuanku Abdurrahman Stadium in Paroi. Devon said NSFC, who will meet Kelantan next on the 23rd of May, will take advantage of the home ground to collect three full points. And on to European football, AS Roma earned a goalless draw at Bayer Leverkusen in their Europa League semi-final return leg to reach the showpiece match with a 1-0 aggregate win. Now, the Rome side have now reached back-to-back -back European finals under coach Jose Mourinho following last season's Europa Conference League title. The visitors were on the back foot for the entire game and had to survive intense pressure from the Germans, who missed a lot of chances and also hit the woodwork as they advanced thanks to last week's 1-0 win in Italy. They will play Sevilla in the final on the 31st of May in Budapest. Yet, it all started well for Leverkusen, looking to reach their first European final in 21 years. Apart from a second-minute chance for Roma's Lorenzo Pellegrini, the hosts had the upper hand in the first half with a dozen efforts on goal compared to their opponent's one. Now The visitors tried to push up a bit higher in the second half to intercept Leverkusen's attacks earlier, but the hosts kept finding ways to create chances. Leverkusen, whose last major title dates back to 1993, had 23 efforts on gold, but it was Mourinho's Roma that went through even if they had just the one effort on goal in the entire game. And that wraps up Malaysia Tonight. A reminder of our top story, contra flow lanes to tackle traffic congestion woes. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to Salo and Brita RTM and have a pleasant evening.